Today, I'll be reacting to Jordan versus Kobe every time they faced off. So let's go right into the video. Michael Jordan and Kobe Bryant were extremely similar as basketball players and are the two greatest shooting guards in NBA history. Even though Kobe and MJ never met in the playoffs, they played a total of 11 games against each other. Here's the complete history of their matchups with statistical breakdown and all the trash talk that came with their killer mentality. Before we get into the video though, I just want to say about Michael Jordan and Kobe. They are the best two shooting guards in NBA history. The total of 11 games against each other. Here's the complete history of their matchups with statistical breakdown and all the trash talk that came with their killer mentality. Number 1. December 17, 1996. Bulls 129, Lakers 123. Kobe Bryant took his talents from the Lower Merion High School directly to the NBA in 1996. His parents had to sign his first contract because he was underage, and at the time, Bryant was the youngest player to ever suit up in an NBA game. And Wait, hold up. Wait, hold up. Kobe Bryant's parents had to sign his first contract because he was underage? Okay, wait, he came straight from high school. So I'm guessing he definitely could have been 18 then. So he, he must have been 17. He had to be 17. He had to be. Lower Merion High School directly to the NBA in 1996. His parents had to sign his first contract because he was underage, and at the time, Bryant was the youngest player to ever suit up in an NBA game. And even though he was quicker than most players and extremely advanced for his age skill-wise, Kobe was still just a skinny kid fresh out of high school. Jordan was the biggest sports superstar on the planet, and Kobe was barely playing. The lack of bulk limited Bryant's playing time as a rookie, and it wasn't a surprise that Jordan gave him a basketball lesson in their first game, showing the rook he's still a bit wet behind the ears. When when he subbed into the game, Kobe immediately switched onto Michael, who shook him like mob deep for an easy layup. The Bulls won the game against the Lakers in overtime, and Jordan had 30 points, 9 rebounds, and 3 assists in almost 48 minutes. Kobe finished with a modest 5 points on 2 of 5 shooting, but he only played 10 minutes as a reserve. Number 2. February 5th, 1997. Lakers 106, Bulls 90. Less than 2 months later, the... Okay, so that first game, okay. Kobe Bryant, he just getting started. He rarely was playing. I still think that's kind of crazy, though, that Kobe wasn't playing. Like, think about it. Like, he just said it. He only played 10 minutes and scored five points, so he clearly was producing when he was on the court. People might not think he had five points at a lot, but in 10 minutes, that's not bad. I'm still skeptical about that. Like, come on, you ain't playing Kobe? That sounds crazy to me. <laughs> Kobe not getting any playing time sounds crazy. That's nuts. But yeah, like MJ at the time, you know, MJ in his prime, 96. Yeah, MJ was in his prime. We had to tell Kobe, like, okay, rookie. Hey, okay, rookie. Since you want to guard me, let me give you this work. <laughs> Hey, but that's the one thing I always respect about Kobe. Kobe Bryant is my favorite basketball player. Him and LeBron is my favorite basketball players. Kobe Bryant and LeBron. Both of them is my favorite basketball players. The one thing I liked about Kobe the most, he was never scared. <laughs> He wasn't scared of nobody. That's what I always respect about Kobe. He wasn't scared not one bit. <laughs> On 2 of 5 shooting, but he only played 10 minutes as a reserve. Number 2, February 5th, 1997. Lakers 106, Bulls 90. Less than two months later, the young Lakers rookie had another opportunity to study the best player in the game from up close. Without Shaq in the lineup, the Lakers surprisingly cruised to an easy victory over the defending champs, who also had the best record in the league at the time. Jordan finished with 27 points on 10 of 24 shooting, 4 rebounds and 4 assists, while Kobe had 5 points and 3 boards on 2 of 7 from the field in 12 minutes of playing time. Bryant defended Michael on a couple of plays, and this time around he was much better at containing him, as Jordan struggled with efficiency due to a long road trip and the tough game against Portland the night before. Number three. Well, we ain't giving that excuse to MJ. Col Kobe clamped up MJ. <laughs> he still had 27, but he said Kobe did a better job of guarding. But he said, well, that's because they came from a long road trip and they just came off playing Portland. No, Kobe clamped MJ. <laughs> but I got to go back to that. 10 minutes, then 12 minutes. What is going on? How you not playing Kobe? The I lie, that's, that was low-key disrespectful. How you not, how you don't play Kobe like that? I understand he was young. He's like 17, 18 year old, probably at this point. I understand that. But you gotta play Kobe. <laughs> you have to play Kobe. The Lakers got the dub, so okay. They said they had a total of 11 meetings, okay. So Bulls won the first one, Lakers won the second one. Okay, now it's 1 1. Even though MJ, of course, outperformed Kobe them two games, it's 1 1. It's 1 1 right now. It's 1 1. Efficiency due to a long road trip and the tough game against Portland the night before. Number three, December 17th, 1997. Bulls 104, Lakers 83. 
If you know anything about Kobe Bryant, you know that he was a maniacal worker who would spend countless hours in the gym trying to get better at every facet of basketball. After he airballed four clutch shots against Utah in the 97 playoffs, Kobe got much stronger in year two. His stats doubled in almost every category, but the Lakers coach still had the 19-year-old Kobe coming off the bench. The third meeting between Jordan and Young Mamba came at the right time for everyone pondering who would be the next MJ if Jordan indeed decided to step down after the 98 season. Even though he was still a teenager coming off the bench, Bryant had a memorable game, going bucket for bucket with the greatest player in the game and showing no fear whatsoever. Jordan finished the game with 36 points on 12 of 22 shooting, but Bryant wasn't far behind with 33 and 12 of 20 from the field. The Bulls won the game and MJ was clearly a better player, a seasoned vet who embodied the phrase, you reach, I teach. And while Kobe was on the receiving end of a few patented turnaround jumpers from MJ, he was learning and soaking it all in, trying to emulate Jordan in almost every way. Number four, February 1st. Okay, MJ got the dub. Okay, now it's two to one. But Kobe, you see, got 33. See, Kobe, I like that. Every time he saw MJ, he guarded him. I like that. I like that. But two one right now. MJ got the lead right now. MJ got the lead right now. 36 and 33. I don't know if MJ was guarding Kobe or not, but if he was, they for sure was going at it. <laughs> that was a straight battle, even though the Bulls did blow them out. But I'm talking about individually. And trying to emulate Jordan in almost every way. Number four, February 1st, 1998. Lakers 112, Bulls 87. Just like the previous three meetings between Kobe and MJ, the home team notched the W when they met in February of 1998. Jordan once more won the scoring battle against Kobe with 31 points compared to Bryant's 20, but Kobe again spent less than 30 minutes on the floor and showed that he's ready to take over, going blow for blow with MJ and showing some of the same mannerisms that Michael had. Number 5, February 8th, 1998. Okay, now it's 2-2. Two, two. They played each other 11 times. Like, come on. We at number five right now. We at number five right now. We're almost pretty much midway through it. We're pretty much almost midway through, like, the matchups. Kobe's still playing under 30 minutes. Like, come on. Like, come on, man. He hooping, too. That's what makes it even crazier. Kobe hooping, too, in the limited minutes he's getting in this matchup. Some of the same mannerisms that Michael had. Number five, February 8th, 1998. East, 134. West, 114. Just a week after their regular season matchup, Kobe and Michael were on the opposing sides once again, this time at the All-Star Game in New York. And this is what Michael had to say about the rising star from Los Angeles. That little Laker boy is going to take everybody one-on-one. -on -one. He doesn't let the game come to him. He just goes out there and takes it. Thanks to fan voting, Brian had become the youngest player. Wait, Mike, Mike, wait, let's look at this quote again. That little Laker boy is going to take everybody one-on-one. -on -one. He doesn't let the game come to he just him. Just goes yeah. out there and takes it. Yeah. He said he, he doesn't let the game come to him. He just goes out there and take it. Mike, that was you. <laughs> Mike, that was you. <laughs> this is funny because Michael Jordan talking about Kobe. Now, I don't think he meant like ill intent by saying this. I just think it's funny how he talking about him. Like, dude, that's your younger self you're talking about. <laughs> MJ, that was you when you was young. You didn't let the game come to you. You was taking everybody one-on-one. You was going out there trying to take it. <laughs> I think that quote is hilarious. I think that's hilarious. Thanks to fan voting, Brian had become the youngest player ever to play in the All-Star game and the first player in history that started in the All-Star game but didn't start for his own team. Bryant once again refused to back down from Jordan. He was great at checking him throughout the game. However, Jordan proved that he's still at the pinnacle of the basketball world, leading the East to an easy victory with 23 points, 6 rebounds, and 8 assists. MJ took home the MVP trophy, but Kobe had plenty to be happy about as well. He was the youngest All-Star ever, and he scored 18 points in 22 minutes, the most on the West team. No I guess it's 3-2, MJ got the lead. Y'all, do y'all... <laughs> I just, I just can't dismiss that. Kobe is the youngest player ever to start in the All-Star game. And this man started in the All-Star game while not starting on his own team. That is insane. <laughs> I know it's fan voted, but still think about how nuts that is. <laughs> think about how crazy that is. That is ridiculous. <laughs> like, come on. Like, even All-Star game, he played 22 minutes. Got 18 points. That was the most on the team. <laughs> like, come on. Kobe is showing you early in his career. He's a dog. Give that brother some minutes. <laughs> Give that man some minutes. Ever. And he scored 18 points in 22 minutes. The most on the West team. Number six, February 10th, 2002. West, 135. East, 120. 
Jordan retired in 1998 after. Wait, hold six- up, hold up. He said West 135, East 120. Okay, so Kobe got this matchup. So Kobe got this matchup. It's just a little typo, I guess. So, okay, so it's 3-3. Okay, it's 3-3. February 10th, 2002. West 135, East 120. Jordan retired in 1998 after his sixth championship, but the competitive fire kept him restless, and he unretired for the second time in 2001. MJ started playing for the Wizards, and the next time he suited up against Kobe was again in the All-Star game. However, this time, the roles were reversed. Bryant was now the best shooting guard in the NBA, coming off back-to-back titles, while Jordan was trying to prove that he can still play with the best. Kobe was very much aware that this was the first time he was on the court with MJ after four years, and he wanted blood. Mamba scored game-high 31 points, clearly trying to exert his dominance over the field and obviously going for the MVP. And just like that, the MJ vs. Kobe conversation had come full circle since their last meeting at the 1998 All-Star Game. Now the West won with a double-digit margin, and it was Kobe who won the All-Star Game MVP, while Jordan had a pretty uninspired performance with 8 points on 4 of 13 shooting. Number Yeah, Kobe! Tell MJ what's up! <laughs> yeah, Kobe! Yeah! We like that! Yeah, Kobe, go at MJ! We like that! Number 7, February 12th, 2002. Lakers 103, Wizards 94. The fate of the schedule would have it that Jordan's Wizards played the first game after the All-Star break against the Lakers in the Staples Center. And unlike the All-Star game, this one was a little more competitive. Wizards were trying to make the playoffs, while the Lakers were trying to maintain their record without Shaq, who was injured. It was a close game for much of the fourth quarter until Kobe pulled the Lakers away with a brilliant all-around performance. He finished the game with a triple-double of 23 points, 11 rebounds, and a career-high 15 assists. Jordan wasn't bad either, with 22-5-5. Five and five but it was apparent that the student had outdone the teacher and that MJ doesn't have the physical capability anymore to trade buckets with Kobe for 48 minutes. Number eight, April 7th. Okay, Kobe got the lead now. Okay, I'm liking this. Well, we about to go in the eighth matchup, but okay, so far went through seven matchups. Kobe got the 4-3 lead on MJ. See, this is when MJ was in his older years and Kobe was in his prime. Now Kobe's destroying him. (laughs) Second, 2002. Lakers 113, Wizards 93. In the last game of the 2002 regular season, the Lakers once again hammered the Wizards, who were out of the playoff picture. Jordan was battling a knee injury in the second half of the year, and he came in as a reserve in this game, finishing with just two points and 12 minutes of action. The Lakers were on their way to a three-peat and won the game with the foot off the gas. Bryant ended up with 14 points on 6 of 13 shooting, and this was easily the most meaningless game between Kobe and MJ. Number 9. It was meaningless, but Kobe still beat him up on matchups, though. (laughs) I don't care if MJ played one minute. If I scored 50 and MJ played one minute, I'm saying I scored 50 on MJ. (laughs) Now, of course, Kobe, he didn't score 50. He had like 13, 14, something like that. But still, though, (laughs) Kobe should count that matchup that he beat MJ. So we're going to matchup 9, 5-3. Kobe got the lead. He should take this lead all the way he should because this one he was his prime lakers three-peat and him and shaq best duel in nba history in my opinion shaq and kobe and michael jordan he was in his later years with the wizards so kobe should take this matchup all the way this was easily the most meaningless game between kobe and mj number nine november 8th 2002 wizards 100 lakers 99 Just when it seemed that Bryant could outduel Jordan at will, the man who many considered as the GOAT had another thing coming for a successor. With bad knees and many years removed from his athletic prime, MJ showed the world that he's still every bit of a killer he once was, maybe just a tad slower. Coming from the bench, the 39-year-old Michael scored 25 points on a very efficient 9 of 14 shooting in a game that got decided at the buzzer by a Jerry Stackhouse dunk. Kobe did score 27 points, but was inefficient from the field, forcing a shot through the stretches of the game. This game was a prelude to another all-star game outing between the two superstars, and it gave MJ the bragging rights over Bryant, which he would use to the fullest. Number 10, February 9th, 2003. Okay, this getting good. Okay, I thought Kobe was going to ride out this matchup and just win the rest of the games. Okay, we're including the all-star games, by the way, as well. Okay, so Kobe got the 5-4 lead. We're going on matchup 10. I'm liking this. I'm liking this. Best two shooter guards in NBA history going at it. I like this. I like this. West 155, East 145. You only got three. I got six, Michael teased Kobe during his final All-Star appearance. Both were very fluent in smack talk, and they laughed and traded barbs in the middle of the game like it was nothing. 
However, at first, it seemed like Jordan would have his worst All-Star game ever, considering he missed his first seven shots. But in typical Jordan fashion, he started splashing. And with the game on the line, it was MJ with the ball in his hands. With five seconds remaining in overtime and the game tied at 136, Jordan shouldered Sean Marion away and hit his trademark fadeaway jumper to give the East the 138-136 lead with three seconds remaining. It was supposed to be another game winner added to Jordan's rich collection, but Kobe wasn't interested in that. Bryant got fouled in the attempt of a buzzer-beating three-pointer and proceeded to hit two of three free throw attempts to tie the game. In the second overtime, the Kobe-led West destroyed the East and won the game by 10. Jordan finished with 20 points on 9 of 27 shooting, and Bryant had 22, hitting 8 out of 17 shots. Okay, so Kobe won the matchup. That's six wins right there. Oh, yeah, that's six wins. Kobe won that matchup between him and MJ. Okay, he won the matchup. Kobe did always say he could beat MJ one-on-one, -on -one, though. <laughs> Kobe probably was saying he was better than MJ. I mean, MJ and Kobe one-on-one, -on -one, that would be a great matchup. You're going to be seeing the same shots and the same moves, in my opinion. I think Kobe can beat MJ one-on-one. -on -one. I think he can. I think he can. The difference between Michael Jordan and Kobe, of course, Michael Jordan... I think he's the second greatest basketball player ever. But the one thing I will give Kobe over MJ, though, Kobe did have a better handle, and I think he was a better three-point shooter than MJ. I will give Kobe that. He he did have a better handle, and his three-point shooter was better than MJ. So I think Kobe could beat MJ. I think he could. It would definitely be close. I definitely think Kobe could have beat MJ one-on-one, -on -one, most definitely. Number 11, March 28, 2003. Lakers 108, Wizards 94. Kobe was a sneaker free agent during the 2003 season, and he was wearing Jordans during the All-Star game in February. And even though he lost the game, Michael had hit Kobe the devastating blow. You can wear the shoes, but you could never fill them. Kobe got so pissed off because of what Jordan had said that he didn't speak to his teammates for two weeks, and Phil Jackson wondered what was going on with him. Then Kobe told him Jordan's words that he could always copy him, but that he would never be like him. So when they played the Wizards for the final time, everyone on the Lakers knew in advance that they would just give the ball to Kobe and move out of the way. Brian scored 30 of the Lakers' first 38 points, whomever the Wizards used to try to guard him. Oh my gosh! <laughs> Oh my gosh, Kobe was a dog. Oh, man. Oh, no, nah. Kobe was different. Oh, man. Oh, my gosh, Kobe was different. MJ, why would you tell him that? <laughs> no, nah, we got to go back to that quote. Ain't no way he told Kobe that. Come on, MJ. And he was wearing Jordans during the All-Star game in February. And even though he lost the game, Michael had hit Kobe the devastating blow. You can wear the shoes but you could never fill them. Oh, man, you can wear the shoes, but you can never fill them. Oh, that's tough, man. Kobe heard MJ tell him that. He's, he didn't talk to nobody for two weeks. Kobe was like, boy, you got me messed up. <laughs> boy, you got me messed up. Man. Oh, my god. Michael gosh. had hit Kobe the devastating blow. You can wear the shoes, but you could never fill them. Kobe got so pissed off because of what Jordan had said that he didn't speak to his teammates for two weeks, and Phil Jackson wondered what was going on with him. Then Kobe told him Jordan's words that he could always copy him, but that he would never be like him. So when they played the Wizards for the final time, everyone on the Lakers knew in advance that they would just give the ball to Kobe and move out of the way. Brian scored 30 of the Lakers' first 38 points, whomever the Wizards used to try to guard him. He finished with 55 points, hitting 9 of 13 for 3 and 6. 16 out of 18 from the free throw line. Jordan wasn't a slouch either, shooting 50% from the field for 23 points, but this matchup made something clear. While Jordan still showed flashes of brilliance, it was obvious that he was past his prime and that the new sheriff is in town. In oh yeah, oh yeah, Kobe had to tell MJ what's up, your time is done. <laughs> Your time is done. I'm here now. I'm here. It was so funny because I was talking about earlier about him talking about he dropping 50 on MJ. See, like this right here. See, this was the last matchup. And I, if I'm Kobe, I'm telling everybody and their mama, I drop 50 on MJ. I'll be telling so many people I drop 50 on MJ. You will be sick of me. <laughs> I probably say the story multiple times. <laughs> yeah, I drop 50 on MJ. I probably tell everybody 10 times. Oh, no, that's funny. But oh, yeah, man, Kobe, he was such a dog. Kobe was such a dog. That Mamba mentality. The field for 23 points, but this matchup made something clear. While Jordan still showed flashes of brilliance, it was obvious that he was past his prime and that the new sheriff is in town. In terms of statistics, Michael had the clear advantage over Bryant when Kobe was just starting out, but lost it during the two Wizards years. 
Bryant outscored Jordan 253 to 222 in their 11 meetings, and he also had a clear edge in victories. He went 5 for 3 against Jordan in the regular season and 2 for 1 in All-Star games for a combined 7 and 4 record against MJ. Great video from Nonstop Sports. Oh yeah, I, I really like this video. So yeah, Kobe outplayed MJ. He scored more points and he had more wins. MJ, of course, had the advantage. He was in his prime. Kobe was just coming to the league. Kobe wasn't getting that many minutes. So of course, MJ's gonna have the edge. But later on, as they kept playing each other, MJ was out his prime and Kobe was in his prime. So of course, Kobe was gonna have the edge. MJ and Kobe, best two shooting guards ever. Kobe really did look up to MJ though. He tried to take everything from MJ. But the fact how similar they are was nuts. Both of them was 6'6". Six, six. I think Kobe and MJ was like, what, 2'10", 215 as well? I think MJ was athletic, but don't get me wrong. Kobe did win the slam dunk contest, I think. Like, Kobe was very athletic as well. The fact Kobe pretty much copied MJ game, and he probably enhanced it a little bit because with the handle, and I think he had a little bit better of a three-point shot than MJ, that's actually nuts. A lot of people say, like, you know the commercial back in the day, I want to be like Mike. Kobe literally was trying to be like Mike. If Kobe had six rings, oh yeah. <laughs> now, if Kobe had six, that would have been insane. He would have retired with six if the NBA allowed him to play with Chris Paul, but that's another story for another, that's another conversation for another day. So drop down in the comments below your thoughts about MJ, your thoughts about Kobe, your thoughts about their matchup. What do you like about both of their games? Was MJ your favorite player? Was Kobe your favorite player? Was both of them your favorite players? I'm just curious to see what you all think. Furthermore, like and subscribe. Also hit that notification bell so you will never miss another video from me. And I hope everyone have a blessed day. I'm out.